I've been using the new 16 inch M1 Max MacBook Pro for over 6 months now and I want to share my thoughts with you guys on it from a music production perspective. Is M1 worth the hype? How well does it work with music production software? What's good about it? What's bad? I'm covering it all in this video. Let's get it. Now this isn't going to be a technical review, this is more me talking about why I decided to invest in this machine and if it's actually meeting my expectations as a music producer. Now my thought process behind why I decided to invest in a really powerful MacBook is because for me I'm always looking for ways to remove obstacles or you know anything that gets in the way of me creating. Nothing gets me more frustrated than when I'm in the middle of an idea trying to put together a song or put together a beat and something happens where my system isn't able to handle it and then I gotta like close out the session, create a duplicate session, bounce stems from the other one because the plugins are running too much. Anytime I have to you know take a 30 minute break or an hour break to figure out technical issues that are getting in the way of me creating it's super frustrating because by the time I'm done solving the issue that flow of creativity that I had before is gone. This is why for me it's important to invest in systems that get out of my way when I'm trying to create. Now for those of you who are familiar with my channel, you know that I'm a music producer and I'm also an artist. So oftentimes I'm creating these really, really big sessions where I have the production session on the top and right in the same session I love to record vocals and make changes and do all of that kind of in the same place. Not everybody will agree with this workflow, but it's what I like the most. I like being able to record a vocal and then get a production ID and then being able to add some production stuff at the same time. Bouncing back and forth between recording vocal ideas and you know laying down new production that's what I really like to do in a session and sometimes those sessions get really crazy it might be 50 60 tracks and you know I like having a system that's able to keep up with this type of workflow and I gotta say that when it comes to that I have no complaints when it comes to this new MacBook it handles all my sessions I've never had a situation in where like I'm running out of RAM I'm running out of you know processing power we always get those hiccups with you know VSTs that crash our sessions and you know DAWs being a little crazy but in terms of the system itself I've never had any issues in terms of processing and on that note I'm really happy with this computer I think one of the biggest concerns for music producers whenever you have to do a computer upgrade or an OS upgrade it's how is the music production software gonna run. Uh, I know that was one of my biggest concerns. I wasn't sure if all the plugins and all the software that I use would run well on M1. And I gotta say that using this Rosetta technology that Mac has built in, everything runs exactly as I expected it to. I haven't really had any issues with any plugins that I was using before that no longer run now. And this is all due to this Mac feature called Rosetta where pretty much it runs software in your M1 MacBook Pro as if it were an Intel computer. It's pretty much the temporary solution for anyone who has an M1 MacBook and is looking to run software that only works on Intel. And I gotta say that all the software that I run using Rosetta runs really, really well. I haven't had any performance issues, so I can only imagine how well the software is gonna work once all that music production software becomes natively optimized for M1. Anyone who has been producing for a long time has gone through that situation where you update your computer and suddenly some piece of software that used to work no longer works so then you have to downgrade and it's a hassle and I'm very happy to report that that hasn't been the case for me using this M1 computer. Now, one of my favorite things about this new MacBook, I gotta say the first thing is the performance. I'm really glad that I haven't had any issues on that front, like I said. I hate having computer troubles. I hate when my computer's performance gets in the way of me creating. Haven't had that problem, so I'm very happy. Second favorite thing is the display. It looks beautiful. I love streaming any 4K content on there. It looks great. Honestly, I'm disappointed because I have this external monitor, which is a 5K monitor, but it doesn't look as good as the XDR display that's in my MacBook Pro. It just is not a competition. Then I also really like the keyboard and trackpad. I find that they both work really well. They're very responsive. I had one of the old 2017 MacBook Pros before this one and the keyboard was really weird. It had one of those butterfly keyboards that had a bunch of issues. I actually had to go to the Apple store multiple times to get keys replaced on it and I haven't had any trouble with that. Obviously I've only had this computer for about six or seven months now so it's possible I can have issues in the future but so far so good and you know the keys feel really great on it trackpad feels great no complaints at this point 
Also, the battery is great on this computer, not that it's something I use very much. Most of the time I'm using this computer, I'm using it plugged in, but anytime I have had to use the battery, it runs really well. I can use it for hours without having to be too worried. And one of my favorite things is that not only does it charge with a MagSafe charger that it comes with, which is a fast charger, but also it charges with USB-C. So if you have a USB-C charger, you can charge it with that which is very convenient. For example, my monitor actually sends charge to my computer, so I don't even regularly use the MagSafe charger. I keep it in my backpack for whenever I'm out and about with the computer. I'll add one bonus favorite thing, and it's the fact that we have an SD card slot now, which is super useful, especially as a video creator. I love being able to take the SD card out of my camera, throwing it into the computer, doing whatever I have to do, and pop it right back into the camera. It's super helpful, and I don't have to carry around any other unnecessary dongles, which, Apple historically loves to make us do. One thing that I don't like very much is that in my old MacBook Pro, the one that I mentioned from 2017, we had four USB-C Thunderbolt 4 ports. Now we only have three of them, which I'm not gonna lie, there are many situations in where I do actually miss that extra port, but it also makes up for it with the fact that we have an SD card slot now and also an HDMI port. But I gotta be honest with you, I don't really use the HDMI port. Sometimes it is handy, like if I'm bringing my laptop somewhere and I wanna, you know, plug in my laptop to someone's TV, it comes in handy in that scenario, but it's very rare where I actually have to use that. And now for the last part of this video, let me open up one of my Ableton sessions so I can show you guys the MacBook Pro in action. Alrighty, so we're back. As you guys can tell, it's nighttime now, but I wanted to take an opportunity to hop into the MacBook and show you guys how Ableton runs on here. So just for some context, right now I have Ableton running, I have QuickTime rec recording my screen, uh, and I also have Logic running at the same time actually recording what's coming out of this microphone. So I have a lot going on. Uh, if you guys look here on the top right, it says that Ableton is using 14, 15% of the processing power. Uh, let's run this session. This is a big session. It has 47 tracks. Um, every one of these tracks has uh, has a lot going on. So here are VSTs. Over here, Omnisphere. A lot of different instances of Omnisphere. Look at all these plugins that I have running. So I just want to give you guys an idea of what I have going on in this session before I play it. This is actually the intro to uh, my new project. Um, so I'll play you guys the beginning part of it. I'm actually going to mute the lead vocals. Um, I definitely feel like we are our generation, the same pocket between 90s uh, up till now, whatever, yep. just like hotbed of culture. We are a new type of young generation. Pausing it real quick, as you guys can tell, the MacBook is still hovering between 15 and 20% as we're playing all this stuff. Older. There's something in it that our parents didn't have. So now the concepts are going to get much more deep. You know, they're going to start looking like the people we looked up to. I want to try something that's pretty stupid and crazy. I'm going to try duplicating all 47 of these tracks and seeing if the system can actually handle playing all of it back. So it's going to be like 100 tracks now. Uh-oh. Spinning wheel. So I have some UAD plugins running and obviously UAD plugins require DSP coming from the audio interface um, and I don't have enough clearly. Um, so I'm gonna press no. So this this part has nothing to do with CPU power but pretty impressive. It'll, it'll actually able to um, duplicate everything. Let's see if it'll play everything back. It's gonna sound crazy but. I definitely feel like we are our generation, the same pocket between 90s, uh, up till now, whatever, yep. just like hotbed of culture. Yeah, it's playing it back, no, no, no problems at all, uh, and it's still at around, you know, in, in the in the mid twenties, mid to late twenties. Uh, let's jump around. Up uh, there, it jumped up to thirties, and then it's coming right down again. Yeah. 
Yeah, it's pretty cool. I mean, it's it's jumping up to the 30s and sometimes even the 40s, but it's handling it, you know, 100 tracks, no stuttering, nothing, so. I am the past and the present and whatever's next. You know, in previous computers that I've had in my old MacBook Pro, I would, you know, have these 60, 70 track sessions uh, that would get really crazy and, you know, my computer would start crackling and, you know, do, you know, letting me know that it can't handle everything that's going on. And fortunately, in the last six, seven months that I've had this computer, I haven't had that issue, which is great. Um, as you can tell, you know, it's even, I just, I just duplicated the whole session and had it play back all those different plugins and it's doing it with no problem at all. Let's try it again. Yeah, not a no hesitation. It, it goes straight into it, which is great. But yeah, hope you guys enjoyed this sort of review on the MacBook Pro. I hope that if any of you guys are in the market to buy a new computer and we're actually considering this computer, I hope that I have been uh, helpful in some way. Also wanted to shout out that earlier this year, I made a studio tour video where I talk a little bit more about my setup. If you're interested in how I have all of this set up in the studio video, I already had the MacBook Pro. So I show you guys kind of the dongles, how everything, how I have everything set up here. You get a little bit more detail as to, you know, how everything in my little setup here works. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Deuces.